I think I'll buy a new car. Uh, say, Melly, how long have I had the old one? One year, eight months, 14 days, 11 minutes, 43 seconds. Three o'clock, boss. Time to go home. So it is. Well, I'm ready. Yeah, long day, 11 to 3, two hours for lunch, three days a week. It's a tough life. <laughs> License number WJK-412. I did three hearts. Three no trumps. I passed. Do you mind if I pass? <laughs> Certainly not. Go right ahead. Thanks. <laughs> about it. This bus is a little old-fashioned. Well, that was delicious. concludes tonight's thrilling episode of our three-dimensional western brought to you by Energade, the combination of soft drink, candy, and dessert with the three-dimensional flavor. Good, good, good. Buy it at your local market. folks. Say that. Now we are going to bring you a special entertainment feature which will show the development of the automobile. Oh, Pop! I want to see another cowboy picture. Quiet! I beg your pardon? Oh, not you. <laughs> Say, those new models look terrific. They are terrific. You should see what your grandfather used to call an automobile. Okay, Sam, start the show. Now, folks, believe it or not, this is actually an automobile. When Grandpa was a 17-year-old hot rodder around the turn of the century, this job was the hottest thing on wheels. Grandpa's newfangled horseless carriage changed his whole life in more ways than one. Motoring was a thrilling experience even in those days. Since there weren't any doors in Grandpa's green boat, sometimes it was a little too thrilling. Every trip was an adventure in those days, and one thing you could always depend on. A 
flat tire. The old retaining rings on the rims didn't always retain what they were supposed to retain. Shock absorbers hadn't been invented yet. And road conditions were ideal for testing the fatigue and failure points of automobiles and drivers. Grandpa's car didn't have much acceleration for passing, so he found himself on the wrong side of the road for longer than he should be. Caught out at night, Grandpa's gas or oil headlamps weren't much competition for a couple of fireflies. The little speedster had no top, and it was far from comfortable in an unexpected shower. The windshield was a great improvement. But without a wiper, even Grandpa's 2020 vision couldn't keep him out of trouble. The runabout didn't have a self-starter, and often the 10-horsepower engine didn't respond to the hand crank. Occasionally, even on good roads, individual parts failed without warning. Axles snapped. When drag links and steering knuckles failed, it was hard to tell what might happen. With every passing year, improvements came thick and fast. Stronger and safer wheels were developed with demountable rims for tires. Doors were added to keep people safely inside. Tops became standard equipment. Windshields protected motorists from bugs and the elements. Wipers were invented to help the motorist drive safely in bad weather. The driver's seat was moved from right to left to make passing safer. The electric starter replaced the old hand crank. This remarkable invention enabled Grandma to get into the automobile driving act. And she really loved it. As the years went by, the automobile manufacturers continued to improve their cars and make them safer so that more and more people could use and enjoy them. Press steel wheels for greater strength, stoplights to warn following drivers, rear view mirrors, four wheel hydraulic brakes to increase stopping power, bumpers to add more protection, rubber covered pedals to keep feet from slipping, Safety glass increased passenger protection tremendously. Welded all steel bodies and all steel tops meant more strength and safety. Bumpy roads were smoothed out with shock absorbers and Grandpa could sail along in comfort and safety. Through the years, the automobile changed from a novelty to a necessity. It created a new way of life. It provided a whole new concept of transportation for industry. And we became a nation on the move for work and pleasure. Besides designing better automobiles, the manufacturers developed research and testing techniques to help them build safer cars. The science of metallurgy met the challenge of creating more efficient and stronger parts and assemblies. Scientists used all kinds of technical equipment in research and development programs. Ingenious torture tests were designed to reveal fatigue and failure points in parts and assemblies. And like the parts and assemblies, the cars themselves were tested under all kinds of driving conditions make sure that they would operate with maximum efficiency and safety. At the end of the rugged test run on the proving grounds, they were disassembled down to the last bolt and checked and studied in minute detail. Year after year, manufacturing processes steadily improved. To make sure that every automobile that left the factory was in good working order, each car was subjected to more than 2,000 inspections cars became safer and more reliable. So when Grandpa, still plenty spry in spite of his age, set out for a little trip, his car was reliable, safe, comfortable, and easy to drive. Safety door locks kept Grandpa secure inside the all-steel body. The adjustable seat quickly placed him in a comfortable position. 
the automatic transmission made driving easier. And easier controls meant safer driving. Styling contributed to safety. The low center of the gave more stability. Tubeless tires meant increased safety. New equipment kept Grandpa warm in the winter and cool in the summer to add to his comfort. And a more comfortable driver was a safer driver. More powerful and reliable engines were developed to make driving more efficient. When Grandpa passed another car, he did it safely and easily. Wrap-around windshields and larger rear windows increased visibility tremendously. Sealed beam headlamps guided Grandpa safely at night. Power brakes made it possible for him to stop easily and quickly. Directional signals let the other fellow know the driver's intention. Power steering not only made parking a breeze, it made all driving easier. Even in the good old days of the 1950s and 1960s, Grandpa could rely on his automobile to get him to his destination quickly, safely, and fresh as a daisy. So you see, folks, all of you who are living in the year 2000 are fortunate because through the years, the automobile manufacturers have had as their goal your safety first. They have constantly improved the quality and safety of automobiles. And they will continue in the future as they have in the past to create cars that are more maneuverable, more responsive, more dependable in every situation, and easier, more pleasant, and safer for all of us to drive, including, of course, Grandpa. That's the ding-dong truth, folks. Look at me going on 117. It's this easy modern living that does it. Well, so long, kids. Gotta go pick up another new model. Uh -oh.